Uh, my name is Daniel Moy. Uh, this is my father's Lord Cortina. I've been in the family from as long as I can remember, longer than me, growing up around it. When my old man was 16, 17, getting his license, first time out, had original, started mucking around with cars on the street, doing laps and made it what it is today. Number one would have been the wool stands it used to do, always on the back bumper and being in Oran Park or rocking up at just in the car park, just wool standing it and burnouts like the summonouts back in the back at the beginning, seeing all the old videos come back on Facebook and yeah. Man, the earliest memory was dad jumping in on a Friday night, doing laps all weekend and loading up on a Sunday or a Saturday and going to Oran Park or Eastern Creek at the old racetrack back then on the trailer and back home, back in the garage and working on it, hanging out with him, putting muck around, cleaning it up. He'll drive this, rain, hell, shine. Um, I've been at work and rock up and my he's pulling up in the driveway with 30 trucks parked around him, jumping out, goes, go look at the job site, jump back in and go to the next job. Uh, I think he's out every week in it, at least once a week, twice a week in it. Yeah, he's definitely a new man when he drives. You see the kid in him come back out and you know, all the work stress has disappeared and he's just in his car driving around, going for coffee and just see him freshen up. He's a new, new man. It's hard to get him out of the driver's seat, but yeah, we jump in every couple of weeks. I might jump in and give it a little lap when he's running around and mucking around in something else. Oh, he's always got some new idea to what to do with it. If he's, what event he wants to race it at, or if he wants to go and just drive it to Melbourne, drive it to Queensland. He's, he just wants to put as many laps on it as he can. Yeah, I think he had a few ideas to put different combos in it but just always wanted to keep the chassis, always wanted the WOG 007 name to stay original. Yeah, definitely part of the family. Um, my grandmother, my grandfather, my uncles, all, everyone knows it as dad's pride and joy when he, that's what he worked for, to put money into it and go racing. This car probably made us build up Moitz Racing to what it is with the 10.5 car being the first car and having the two other pro mods. Um, definitely came from this, started from this. I think if the boys could tell you a story, you'd have dates on the quarter, on the panels here, that what day you wanted stuff finished and just pushing it, hang out and be able to drive it again. Wog 007 is a different feel. I think it's the race, the race cars are unbelievable, but being able to go on the street and the looks this car gets and the stories people actually pull you up in the car parks and Tell you, tell you about the car and what it means to them is a big one, but the biggest buzz is knowing how much people actually appreciate the car and what it's done for them. Like To push their builds along is a big one. Like You'll be driving it down the street and you'll get guys at the traffic lights saying, oh, I remember this doing a burnout or remember doing a wool stand, remember it at the track. I think that's the biggest thrill out of it, to get in their stories. My name's Glenn Davies and I'm here with uh, Michael Moyt's infamous WOG 007 Cortina. My history with the car goes back to uh, 2012, maybe the end of 2011. Michael asked me to give the car a bit of a revamp back then. I followed the car long before that, back in its Eastern Creek days, uh, but that's basically when I, when I first started working on the car. You know, everybody knows the car for its wheel stands. It's late night cruises at Harry's, you know, heading out to get pies and all that sort of stuff. It started life as a, just a Windsor, and then CV Performance were involved in the car back early on. And they put a set of uh, Cleveland heads on it, turned it into a Boss motor. Uh, it's still the same motor in the car today. We haven't even decompressed it for the turbos. Uh, we just have it running 10 pound at the moment, 10 to 12 pound, just to run it in. Because we haven't decompressed it, we're not pushing it very hard, but it made uh, 850 on the hubs on just short of 12 pound. It has a flex sensor in it, so it uh, has the capability of running both, but at the moment it's only on petrol. 
Uh, okay, so controlling the engine, we have a uh, the brand new Nexus Haltech ECU, uh, and to for the force induction, it's twin precision turbochargers. Probably it's one of the most difficult things when we took the job on, you know, the latest development of the car. Uh, Michael had a few specifics in regards to turbocharging it and what he was after from the car. Um, so taking that on board, we, it really, it really took a long time to work out exactly how we can fit everything and have everything functional, serviceable, um, to be able to race the car, strip the car, work on the car, uh, service the car. Uh, that, that, that's probably, it, it would be easy to be 50% of the actual build time uh, was developing it and designing on how, how exactly it was going to work. Uh, so we have uh, twin water tanks. It's obviously for the twin turbochargers, they have their own water to air intercooler, um, which runs a heat exchanger at the front, uh, twin pumps, and each, uh, each heat exchanger has its own water tank as well, like its own reservoir for water. Uh, the tanks are on each side here. They can be filled with ice if need be for a racetrack. We, we actually spent a fair bit of time designing the front section here uh, with Drag Week in mind. Uh, if we needed to access intercoolers or hoses or the heat exchanger or any, any, any problems that we had down there, uh, this is all removable fairly quickly. So from a service point of view, it wasn't such an issue. It was more about designing around uh, racing the car and servicing it at the racetrack. The only thing carried over from 1981 from the original WOG 007 uh, is probably the body and chassis, maybe some headlights and bumpers. Uh, the motor is the same motor, uh, but besides that, everything else has been uh, either rebuilt, refurbed, redesigned, re-engineered. The race car's definitely inspired the build uh, to an extent. It's in Michael's blood to go fast, so, you know, obviously the turbochargers uh, and everything else that we've put into this build uh, has come from our racing history and background. Um, we actually run a fuel pump out of one of the, the race cars. It's a mechanical uh, fuel pump out of the door slammer. Part of the technology that we'll be bringing over from the race car is the radial tyre racing. So we'll be running some 315s on the back of this. And the times that Michael would like to run in the car and what we believe are achievable in the car uh, are similar, but they may not be the same thing. I think ideally we'd like to see the car run into the sixes. So we have a brand new set of uh, C3 castings for the cylinder heads. Uh, th they're a great cylinder head anyway, uh, and I think the motor will outperform the turbos and the intercooler system. So uh, the engine, the new engine that we have for it will be very similar in combination, um, just decompressed and run a ton more of boost. It's definitely not too precious to race. Uh, he, he, he drives the car every second day. He drives it on job sites, around job sites, over hills and dirts, and it comes back a mess. So to take the car to the racetrack and cover it in rubber and actually put some runs on it, that's definitely something that he has planned for the future. Um, he's spoken way early in the build about drag week. Uh, he wants the car to be a part of that. So I'm sure a bit of rubber up the back of it and, and some torture at the drag strips, definitely not out of the question.